everyone, and welcome to Bourbon Bites Whiskey Reviews with a Gaming Twist. I am Clifton, and welcome to another Thursday night live stream. You guys know these streams are when I bring on some amazing guests. We have some really awesome people joining us here tonight from Rabbit Hole Distillery. We are going to talk their rye, we're going to talk their gin, and we're going to make some cocktails. So make sure I put the recipe in the description below. If you guys want to prep your ingredients now, get them ready for the end of the stream when we're making a twist on a bee's knees kind of cocktail or a reverse old or reverse gold rush. I don't know what it's called. We'll, we'll let the, we'll let Ashley tell us what it's called later on tonight. Um, but first of all, shout out to our amazing mods here. I see Donnie, the Linux cat. Good to see you, Donnie. Thanks for stopping in, keeping things held down here. I also see some bite club members, which if you guys don't know is my channel membership. Welcome to Lil. Welcome to the bite club. And I think Lil, I think you're the only one here so far that's in the bite club. Oh, there we go. Bourbon new. What is up, Patrick? Good to see you. Thank you all for tuning in. Also, some amazing patrons in the chat. I see Fred Gilbert. I see... I thought I saw Sugar Kitty, but maybe... I saw Sugar Kitty in Perry's chat. <laughs> I've been seeing... I've been watching Perry's stream earlier. I watched Rock Gut Review earlier, so I've been really in tune with everyone going live tonight. Um, hopefully, you guys have been enjoying it, too. Hopefully, you guys have had a couple drinks in you so, so far. If not, don't worry. We're going to drink a lot tonight to make up for it. Um, I do want to say um, we are doing our Patreon after party hangout right after this stream that's for everyone ten dollars and up on patreon if you're interested in joining us for that make sure to go down the description below and join patreon there um, that's the bourbon megabyte level um, there's always a ton of fun hanging with these guys we're also doing our saturday night um monthly hangout for everyone five dollars and up this saturday so if you guys this is a great week to join if you guys have been considering it been on the fence or you could just become a bike club member you know either way really does support the channel it really does mean a lot so without further ado please welcome our guest for the evening our first guest for the evening please welcome adam edwards from rabbit hole adam welcome back hey clifton how are you Good. So if you guys missed it, Adam was actually on my stream um, a few months ago, I think. We talked about Rabbit Hole's two different bourbons. We talked about the High Gold and the um, – and I only know the High Gold because it's right here. What, which one was it? High Gold and Cave Hill. Cave Hill. There we go. I just yeah. I grabbed the I grabbed the High Gold before the stream. I was like, ah, oh, I should have grabbed both bottles, but uh, <laughs> I only got one. So, But, yeah, so, Adam, thank you so much for coming back on. I knew since the first time we, had, we were on that we wanted to come back. Try Boxer Girl Rye, of course, but you also had some surprises. You you told me about this barrel aged gin, bespoke gin. So we have we, it's got a lot of variety here tonight. If you guys aren't a whiskey fan, hey, stick around. We're gonna make some gin cocktails later on. Uh, but hopefully you, you appreciate all spirits like I do. I, I, I'm a you know whiskey's my wheelhouse, but I love a good cocktail. So I'm so excited tonight. Um, Adam, how you been, man? Man, I've been really good, Clifton. It's so fun uh, to be back here with you. You're just like one of my favorite channels. I love oh, all your you. channel. It, <laughs> I've been getting more into gaming than I have before, like the last few months, even since we talked. So, we, oh yeah, what have you been playing? Uh, so I finished um, the newest Zelda. Uh, I think yeah, I think that's the one we were talking about last yeah, time. I think Breath of the Wild, yeah, it out, which was amazing. What an incredible game! I just like put off fighting Ganon like until the very end because I knew as soon as I beat him, like the whole game would end. You know, well, what there's I mean? all the side quests and things and collectibles. <laughs> you can always you can always get back into it. That's the thing. That's one of those I, games that lasts forever if you wanted to. <laughs> that was so much fun. And then uh, you know, got Mario Kart, and so just been uh, whooping my wife's butt on Mario <laughs> Kart, of course. To, you know, making her cry. Uh, <laughs> she's hey, just well. You know what? I, I'm pretty I'm pretty good at Mario Kart. So like I said, we talked about it last time. We need to do a gaming stream here soon. Maybe, maybe, you know, next time you're on, we're gonna we're gonna do some Mario Kart. How about that? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty competitive. You know, me and my wife we're we're very competitive and we've always been into kind of games and board games and everything. And it, we always are rooting against each other. Like we'll do game nights with our friends, and I think sometimes they get very uncomfortable with how competitive we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, me too. You should, you know what I have to, I'm really bad about like when I'm playing a Mario game, I get so into it. Like my like swear filter just comes off. Not that I really have one, but man, I swear more than I ever do in Mario, even like compared to other games. Like I just I get so, I get so into it and competitive. <laughs> oh man. It's, it is really great to be back. I, uh, I can't wait to do these with you. I know we're going to bring, Ashley on later and we're gonna make some cocktails together. Well, she's gonna make them. I make terrible cocktails. That's why I wanted her here. So she's gonna really show us the the way forward on those later. But yeah, I am I am super excited to do these tonight with you. That's awesome. I see a lot of new people popping in. A lot of people came from the Rock Gut Review. Um, cheers to 21090. Good to see you. Glad to see you here again. 
Brandon, I think Brandon, this may be your first time here, or if it isn't, sorry. <laughs> Welcome in, Brandon. Good to see you. Um, Todd Koopa, of course, another amazing patron and Bite Club member. Um, Sugar Kitty, I was just talking about you. <laughs> I said I saw you earlier, but then I realized you weren't here. You're in someone else's chat, but I'm glad you're here now. Um, our friend Swan over at This Is My Bourbon Podcast says, the Founders Collection Rye is my all-time is my all-time favorite rye. I don't know if it's one of or is his all-time favorite rye. Either way, genuinely mind-blowing. Wait, Founders Collection Rye, I don't think I'm, I know much about that one. Can you tell us a little about that one? Definitely. So this last October, we uh, introduced our very first limited bottle, and it's called Founders Collection. And so twice a year, we're going to release a new Founders Collection. So one in the fall and then one in the spring. Um, the very first one that we released was Boxer Grail, like the Boxer Grail we're drinking tonight. Mm -hmm. But it was past strength. Um, I think it was like six years old, so a little bit older than the, uh, than the core lineup. And it was only out of seven barrels, seven barrels total. Some of the first seven barrels that Kabe actually laid down. And wow. With you, man. That is just an awesome bottle. It is so good. It is really good. And that sounds delicious. Oh, you're already getting requests for I feel like this happened last time. People are like, put out this, put out this. Yeah. 210 says, we need a high gold barrel proof, Adam. <laughs> 210 has been asking for a high gold barrel proof from me for like a year and a half. You know, those guys <laughs> constantly ask me for that. We'll, we'll see what happens, all right? We'll see what happens. You know, honestly, we have actually released a high gold uh, uh, cast strength. So we actually introduced our single barrel program. That's this right. Very first one we released last uh, week, last Monday, on National Bourbon Day, which just happened to be my birthday. It's a total coincidence. Uh, That's the, the perfect coincidence. I mean, as if you weren't going to drink on your birthday anyways. You know, you drink even more bourbon. <laughs> but we did. We released it. So that was our first one. Um, it was high gold. And our bar and our uh, our single barrels are always going to be cast strength. Mm. So be on the Very lookout. cool. I love that. I, I, I've seen, I've stalked your Facebook a little bit. Those labels for those single barrels are just absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous labels. And every quarter we're going to have a new artist and a new um, product. So we just did High Gold. This next quarter we're going to do Boxer Grail and it'll be another artist. Um, they are also doing an Alice in Wonderland theme with some different characters. Um, so every quarter it's going to be a new artist that does a new label. So very, very limited. I think it's it's only 10 barrels every three months. That's wow. it. super limited. Um, this first run was Kentucky only. Um, this next run will be out. Um, I can't tell you exactly where it's going to be, but I'll say this, Clifton, you'll be very happy. You'll be very happy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very cool. Well, David Goldman says one vote for Clifton barrel pick. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I'm always interested in a barrel pick if you guys are doing it. <laughs> well, since we're talking, we just mentioned Boxer Grill. I know you guys put together an amazing video about this new whiskey. So what do you say? Let's play that, introduce it, and then let's let's get it in our glasses and talk a little more about it. How about that? Keep it up. Awesome. <laughs> you guys check this video out. It's, it's so cool. It, it blew my mind. <laughs> Great boxers are persistent, determined, strong, and bold. The same goes for great rye whiskey. The story of Boxer Grail, our Kentucky straight rye, is a story of tenacity and perseverance. Back in the day, rye whiskey was prevalent in the Northeast, mainly Pennsylvania and Maryland. In the U.S., it got a knockout punch and nearly disappeared after Prohibition. But like a great fighter, it came back with grit. Boxer Grail is named in celebration of Louisville's rich boxing heritage, and the liquid packs a punch. In 1972, rye whiskey was not the drink of choice, and therefore the distilleries weren't making that much. This is Larry Ebersole. He's known as the godfather of rye whiskey, simply because he's made so much of it. In fact, at one point, when rye production was at its lowest, Larry had a hand in bringing it back. One of the things that caught the industry, flat-footed if you will, was rye whiskey became more popular. And this was a popularity that started throughout the country. And a lot of it was driven by cocktails. The original Manhattan was made with rye whiskey. The problem was no one was producing it except for us. 
With his help, I created Boxer Grill. Its mash bill only contains two grains, rye and malted barley. With 95% rye, the recipe alone makes this a bold rye, punchier than your usual. But with rye, like with all whiskey, the secret is in how you make it. The most important part of making good whiskey is selecting good grain, having a process set up that cooks it correctly, ferments it correctly, and controlling the process. Something we've worked hard to perfect. Our signature cooking process ensures that every batch brings out the most flavor to give us a quality distillate. And after we run it through our handcrafted copper column still, we proof the liquid with Kentucky's limestone abundant water and place it in the barrel at 110 proof. Water breaks down compounds and the wood sugars, creating a smoother whiskey. It's no coincidence that the same city that has produced some of the greatest boxers that have ever lived has also produced some of the world's greatest whiskey. For the conditions that make Louisville the perfect boxing town, make it perfect for whiskey making too. It's a place where it seems even the weather is designed to build character. We see that firsthand inside our rickhouses where our whiskey comes of age. Each year adds more of those complex and rich flavors you won't find in any other rye. And although the weather has a lot to do with it, it's our toasted barrels that take the prize. 20 minutes over natural wood-burning fires bring out herbaceous floral notes that are unique to our rye whiskey. And along with the high rye content, the result is absolutely stunning. A complex rye whiskey with unexpected notes of citrus and rose water along with butterscotch and spice. A character worthy of the title. Oh man, what a great video. That's, that's, uh, it gets me so excited. My mouth was watering as it was playing. <laughs> I love that video. And you know, that guy, Larry, Larry Eversold, I've never been one of those people that gets really um, nervous or tongue tied around celebrities or anything, right? Like, mm -hmm. I just, I just never have been. But when Larry walks into this building, I get like goosebumps. Like, that guy yeah. was such a legend in distilling. I just, every time he walks into the building, I am so excited. And I, I find myself with, you know, in that rare sort of moment for me without having anything to say. I don't know what to say when he walks in the room. But yeah. Well, hopefully you just pour him a glass of whiskey and that's how you end up doing to start drinking, which is okay. <laughs> so Boxer Grill Rye, which again, thank you so much for sending me this bottle. It's again, I love the bottle design. I told you this last time. It's it's such an iconic look. Um, well, tell us a little bit, I mean, we heard the basics, of course, um, but tell us a little bit, of, you know, from your perspective, you know, about Boxer Grill. You know, 95.5 is such a classic mash bill. It's such a celebrated mash bill. First of all, it's that's its name. It's a 95.5 rye, right? It's 90, great question, 95% <laughs> rye, 5% malted barley. That 95.5 is so celebrated because it highlights the rye grain. Mm -hmm. uh, now, where Larry came from, you know, Larry was the master distiller for, you can call it Seagram's or LDI or MGP, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's one of the largest distilleries in the country. Right. What he was kind of saying during that video, they were making it and everybody was buying it from them. They're pretty much known for that 95.5 mash bill. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of times, you know, in, in my position as is, is an ambassador, especially the, the digital ambassador, I kind of get heads up when people will do a podcast or, a, you know, a YouTube channel episode or, or something using our products. And about once a month, I get a heads up and someone does something with Boxer Grail. And they say, hey, we're tasting through all the MGP rise. And I'm like, OK, that's great. But this is not MGP. This is not. It is ours. And the real big difference here is grain selection. So MGP, they do use a little Canadian ride, but generally they're using European rye grain. And European rye grain, grain is going to give you really spicy, very bold green notes. We are using Canadian rye grain in this. So what that does right away 
it gives you a little bit of a different flavor. And you could, even though this is our most savory whiskey, mm-hmm. it really, it's still got a lot of butterscotch and a lot of vanilla to it. And, uh, you know, before we go much further, Clifton, you know me, I'm always going to do this, right? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> before we Thank get you. into it. Thank you again for coming back on. This is so exciting. Thank you for having me. Well, it's a tough job some days, you know. <laughs> it's a tough job. So, um, so wow. you know, what I love about Boxer Grill, using that Canadian rye, um, using the barrels that we use, you know, we'll kind of get into those barrels here in a little bit. But Kelvin Cooper's barrels, they are so well done with the toasting and the charring that mm-hmm. they really give you different flavors than most barrels that people are using. And so mm-hmm. what that's going to do for this rye is it's going to really increase the amount of vanilla that's there. The Canadian grain aspect of it is going to give you more things like rose water, pipe tobacco, and the yeast that we're using, it really gives a big black tea element to Boxer Grill. Something I really enjoy on the finish of Boxer Grill is this great kind of floral slash earthy slash aromatic thing that turns into black tea on the finish. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's very, I mean, a lot of people are saying that it definitely stands out against MGP Rye. Honestly, I, I'm a big fan of MGP Rye. This, to me, drinks very differently. This one is still, it still has the spiciness, of course, that you come to expect from a 95.5 Rye. But there's a lot more, I think it's more mouthfeel, like a better mouthfeel than typical. And do you think that's mainly from like the, the Canadian Rye that kind of contributes to that? The texture on this one, I think, is a little bit more to the types of barrels that we're using. And then the treatment, we're not filtering, not chill filtering right. any of our whiskeys. So, you know, when you chill filter, you tend to remove like esters and lipids and oils. Mm-hmm. Those lipids and oils really kind of contribute to that sort of soft mouth coating, oily sort of texture. You know, oh, absolutely. I was talking about it earlier, mm-hmm. the, the the Founders Collection version of Boxer Grail. It was just, it was almost like marshmallow fluff. Like it was so oh. oily and so thick because it was cast strength. So it was up to uh, one, I think it was like 114 proof. So, you know, almost 20 points higher than this was on the on the proof. And so it really, I think that really showed off the oiliness that those barrels give it and they were not stripping off by chill filtering. Wow, don't, don't tell me with the marshmallow. Toasted marshmallow is my favorite note on a whiskey. So as soon as you said marshmallow, my ears turned up. I'm like, I gotta seek out a bottle. <laughs> well, and you know what? That toasted marshmallow note, it's funny. I've, I've kind of encountered that, you know, through my career in different whiskeys for mm-hmm. different reasons. Sometimes it's coming out of the barrel. Sometimes it's coming out of, you know, the grain or the distillate. Um, I've noticed that, man, let's get like super geeky. So <laughs> fur for all, fur for all is, is a type of alcohol. So fur for all will show up in the, the tails of distilling because it has the highest uh, boiling point uh, or vapor, uh, uh, vaporizing point of any alcohol in there. So it's like three oh god i'm gonna mess this number i think it's like 321 i don't know somebody google it it's like 321 i think is what it is um degrees to actually boil it off and so fur for all is going to give you really rich fruity but also like almost toasted marshmallow notes mm. but here's the great thing clifton fur for all is also present in barrels and if you're toasting a barrel you're actually going to produce more fur for all in it mm. so the more it sits in that barrel the more you're going to get that note in there. So I think that really translates through these Kelvin barrels to our products. That cast strength version of Boxer Grail was it was there. It, that fur for all was really, really strong. So it did have like a toasty, almost marshmallowy kind of marshmallowy, marshmallowy note. Is that a word? I think it is. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree. I think I get it a lot more on the ones that kind of advertise that they are, you know, extra toasty. You know, they they're doing the extra toasting on the barrels. And I mean I know another and I've had a, quite a few distilleries on that have used Kelvin Cooperage, and they're always so proud of it. I mean, you guys put the label right there. Of course, it's see-through because I have a green screen. Oops, I spoiled the illusion there. But you guys have the logo there. I think I, I think it's really cool, like how proud you guys are of the barrels, and I know a lot of other distilleries are too. It's it's high high quality stuff, top notch stuff. Kelvin's incredible. You know, uh, Clifton. Whenever you come visit to Louisville, we'll have mm-hmm. to go check out Kelvin together. You will have the best time. Um, they're really incredible. So, you know, they're, they were owned by a Scottish family. And in fact, that's where they started was in Scotland. 
And right. then I think it was like the late 80s, they shut down their Scottish um, factory and, and just basically ran everything out of Louisville. And so the people in the middle of that cooperage, they're doing the toasting and the charring. And they're the people that have been with the company the longest, like 25, 30 years, because they don't even time anything. They put a barrel on top of that grate with that oak fire underneath, and they'll let it sit there. They'll get it up to about 500 degrees. And then when the inside of the barrel combusts, or like we say in Kentucky, catches far, as soon as that catches <laughs> far, uh, that's when it goes from toasting to charring. And then they just kind of let it ride until it's like 30, 45 seconds, somewhere around there, and they know it's a level three char. So they're mm -hmm. really doing it by like look and feel and smell. It's I mean, it's truly an art form at Kelvin really is yeah and i think a tons a ton of that you know barrel char note is especially on the nose i think more so on the nose than the palate on this you can smell that 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 toastiness of that yeah uh, and we really want to keep as much of that barrel in this i mean even at 95 proof you know we're entering the barrel our, our barrel entry is at 110 mm -hmm. so you know we're not putting it in at like the highest amount which is what like 125 i think we're putting it at 110 now, right now, everything is coming out of stone warehouses. So before we had our warehouses built, uh, there's this great distillery in Kentucky, Castle and Keep. Great. Uh, yes, right? love it. Honestly, one of the best tours. I haven't been to Rabbit Hole. I can't attest to Rabbit Hole, but Castle uh, and Keep's tour is amazing. Oh, it's beautiful out there, too. That castle and, mm -hmm. and, and all the stonework. Well, their warehouses are stone warehouses. And stone mm -hmm. brick houses actually give you lower proof barrels because that angel share will evaporate out, hit the stone, and it falls right back into the barrels. So gotcha. um, right now, by putting it in at 110, there's a lot of times we're pulling barrels. They're actually under entry proof. Um, I've been doing a lot of single barrel tasting, obviously, with our program. And those high gold barrels we've been pulling, I mean, I pulled one the other day that was 90, 98 or 99 proof. Well, if we were going to use that for the core product, that's 95 proof. We have to literally put a drop of water <laughs> in that bucket to get wow. it down. We're retaining so much flavor from that barrel, even at 95 proof. So you can just imagine when it's coming out at 110, 114, 115, how mm -hmm. much of that barrel it's going to bring right along with it. Oh, wow. So I didn't realize you guys had such a low barrel entry proof. That makes it, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, with it being 95 proof, that's not that much variance right there. So you're getting, I mean, yes, it's not what we can typically consider cast strength, but it's pretty darn close for you guys. Yeah, that's actually been a pretty big conversation in the building lately is, you know, what is cast strength? Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I think the the bourbon education level of your normal bourbon drinker is very high these days, right? Mm -hmm. The Even people that say they don't know a lot about bourbon, they can usually cite like the bourbon rules of 51% corn and made in the U.S. and all that, right? So the right. education is really high for the consumer in bourbon, um, but still... It's funny when I kind of encounter, because you, you know I'm very active on social media mm -hmm. for Apple, and I'll encounter people that, you know, I'm talking about cast strength, and I'm like, yeah, this is a single barrel we're going to put out, and it's it's 100 proof. And they're like, well, no, that can't be cast strength. Cast strength is 120 or above. And I'm like, <laughs> let's have that conversation. right? So there is room in the industry for low proof cast strength. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this for a while. You know, I've been in the industry for about 15 years. And I, I, at one point in my career, sure, I, I guess I felt like I had to prove something to people. I don't know. And I was like, absolutely, 165 proof. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll drink it. And I'm not even going to blink, you know. But I only buy <laughs> hazmat whiskey. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, nowadays, I really, there is beauty. There is absolute beauty in mm -hmm. low-proof cast strength. I mean, alcohol doesn't have flavor, right? Ethanol doesn't have flavor. Well, right. it does, but it's like burning. Burning yeah. is <laughs> Right. Water has flavor. And so when you're pulling these low proof casts, right, there's some there's some real beauty there. There really is. That's awesome. By the way, if you guys in the chat have any questions for Adam in general, please feel free to ask them. Um, he's an open book. I think last time I got really nerdy, like you said, and got into Mashville's and everything like that. Of course, you, you guys have already talked about the Mashville on this one. So feel free to ask any questions you have for him about this or even any rabbit hole questions you guys have. Um, well, awesome. Should are we ready to move on to the gin? I mean, I kind of yeah. I do want to do a little side by side because, well, first of all, so what makes this gin special? You, you go ahead and introduce it. <laughs> Absolutely. So we've got bespoke gin, um, and and I'll tell you what, there is actually something really fun that I do with these side by side. So this is a London dry gin um, that we finish in those rye barrels um, for 
like six to nine months, somewhere around in, in that range, okay? Wow. So before we get really, really nerdy with it, let's do something fun. So do you still have some of that rye? I do. Not? Excellent. So smell that rye and really just like, you know, I, I call it getting a snoot full, really full, fill your snoot <laughs> up with the rye. All right, so now put that rye down and smell the gin right away. And surprise, surprise, it smells like a London dry gin. It smells like juniper, <laughs> trees, all that. All right, right. So now we're going to do something fun. Okay. So reset your sense of smell. It just smells like your forearm or your, your, yeah. your, your elbow. My go-to. Yeah, that's like you're using your own pH, basically, to reset your <laughs> That's pretty much what's going on. Now smell the gin again and see how sweet it is. Oh, yeah. It's, it's more citrus up front, yeah. I think. So you basically, when you really smelled the rye, you blinded yourself to the barrel. You just gotcha. took the barrel out of the equation. So then when you went to the gin, you're just smelling that London dry gin, which is a beautiful spirit already. But then when you reset, you go back to it, you really, I think, can appreciate how important that barrel finish is because it really highlights the citrus comes out, the, the sweetness kind of comes out to it. Some of those deeper, richer tones start to sort of balance the juniper and the herbaceousness of that gin and the floral notes. Um, and I'll tell you, I don't know if you've tried this yet. Um, it looked like there was a little bit. Um, yeah, we, we, I will say my husband is a gin aficionado. He has been <laughs> making so many gin and tonics with this. So that's like his go-to drink. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, I'm pretty new to gin. I try, you know, everyone we buy just to, you know, try. I've found that I, I, I'm drawn to the ones that aren't super juniper forward. And I think, I mean, I, I've tried some of this myself as well. That's what I like the most about this. It, it does have it, of course, but it's balanced out with so many other flavors that I think really, really work really well with this. That's the reason we call this bespoke, because it's bespoke tailored for the whiskey drinker. Because it really, and I, I mean, I'll just tell you, I think I personally, I think it tastes like limoncello and Earl Grey tea. Ooh. So I get, I noticed this, I was, I, of course I was doing a little research. I, I noticed someone, I don't know if it was a blog, whatever, gave the note of elderflower. Mm -hmm. That was the flavor that jumped out of my glass. Cause we have an elderflower liqueur that we sometimes spice up our gin and tonics with. Yeah. This has that flavor. Absolutely. That's the one mm -hmm. I can pinpoint the most. You can put this like right next to like St. Germain mm -hmm. and really pull some of those flavors out from each other. Um, so, you know, we don't make the actual gin itself. So, okay, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, what, what, where the you know, gin that's is. not a gin still next door. Um, a lot of distilleries, when they start up, they'll, uh, they'll start by making gin and vodka mm -hmm. first, and it kind of keeps their capital going right. while their bourbon and whiskey is, is aging. You know, Kave has always said, he's like, I, I'm not a gin distillery, I'm not a vodka distillery, I don't want to make it. But he mm -hmm. really appreciates gin. You know, he likes vodka, but he really appreciates gin. He was actually a gin drinker before he was a whiskey drinker. Oh, really? So he found a distillery in London. They're actually the oldest gin distillery in London that makes a gin. They send it over to us. No joke. It comes over at 195 proof. I <laughs> been drinking it at 195 proof. It's terrible at 195. It is raw. That's how I, I've, I've had 190 proof Everclear. Like, cause you can only you can't buy that in Los Angeles, but you can buy it in Las Vegas. Not that I recommend drinking Everclear in Vegas. I just, we bought it to make bitters. We still haven't done that yet, but I did taste a little bit of it. <laughs> it is rough, but gin, like I, I'm okay with gin. I like gin here and there, but I don't want 195 proof gin ever again. <laughs> um, no, I don't know about that. What it allows us to do is we're able to take Kentucky water and gauge it down. And then we put it in those rye barrels for like six months, generally, sometimes as much as nine, if it needs a little extra, mm -hmm. um, you know, because every barrel is so different. But it really, I mean, it makes a beautiful spirit. I mean, what other gin do you know that you can drink neat? Like, <laughs> Especially as a whiskey drinker. I mean, I think that rye barrel is such a thing. I, I've only, man, I'm trying to think. I think I, I saw like a, there's some scotches that are finished in like a rye barrel, but I don't think I've ever seen a, a gin. I've done a lot of research on this this past year because I keep mm -hmm. looking for one. There are barrel aged gins out there. It's been very, very popular um, mm -hmm. for the last you know six, seven years. But I have yet to find someone doing a rye barrel finished gin. Right. Um, pretty much everybody uses bourbon barrels. But also, you and now the more you think about it, I think rye spices I feel like complement gin in general. Just like you know, 
theoretically. <laughs> like if you're coming up with an idea, hmm, should I put it in a bourbon barrel or a rye barrel? To me, it's, rye it's makes a lot of sense. You know, I mean, we did, you know, Caveville last time and, and High Gold, they're pretty aggressive. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a lot of really bold flavors to them. And I think they would overbalance a gin sometimes. So that rye, I think, does a really nice job of highlighting the citrus and the and the juniper, but also balancing it with some caramel and butterscotch. And that tea, I mean, the Earl Grey tea in this is really pulling from that black tea sort of flavor that's in the rye. Yeah, now that you say Earl Grey, that's it, it kind of goes hand in hand with what I was saying with like the elderflower. It's still that that floral kind of yeah. note. But man, that's that's really good. Now, for people like me, for idiots like me that don't really know much about gin, what is a London dry gin? So a London dry gin is basically a very juniper forward gin. Um, they changed the regulations a few years ago. It used to be that it had to be like 70%, you know, juniper in there. Oh, sorry. You're good. Um, so it used to be that it had to be like 70% juniper in there. I think they've changed that. It still has to be like majority of juniper on mm -hmm. it um but it also you know there's other botanicals that you can use it's basically just a neutral grain spirit that they're then going to um you know add different sort of uh, botanical flavors to it um juniper is always going to be the heaviest one it has mm -hmm. to be majority but you know people use things like rosemary um you know citrus uh, tea leaves. I think they're using tea leaves in this. Um, gosh, orris root, just different botanicals that will really bring out different flavors. Now, there's different types of gin. Um, some are more floral, some are sweeter. Um, there's like a something called a gunpowder gin, and mm -hmm. a gunpowder gin is generally a little sweeter. Um, that's kind of like an American style gin, but London dry gin is a very, and it, misnomer, it doesn't have to be made in London. It's just the style <laughs> that, yeah. I always used to think that it's not true. You can make one to try gin. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, like I said, I, juniper is not my favorite flavor. So in general, maybe I should have – this good to know, good info for me. In general, I feel like I should maybe avoid London dries. However, I think the barrel definitely mellows this out a bit. It's Again, it's not – the juniper is not the most dominant flavor to me, thankfully. So I think I think I appreciate this because of the lack of juniper. But again, that's – I'm not the biggest gin guy anyway. So yeah. – <laughs> Well, that's what I'm yeah, most... never going to be a big gin drinker, honestly. But this one is pretty good. <laughs> For sure. Well, well, even though I don't typically drink gin neat, I do love a good gin cocktail. So I think it's time for us to meet the amazing, if, she, if she's ready. <laughs> she is here, and she is the most ready that I've ever seen her. <laughs> well, I'll let you introduce, introduce Ashley. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Clifton. Everybody, this is Ashley Angel. She is hey, our bar manager. Um, she's been very busy this week because we just opened the distillery back to the public this Tuesday. I believe. Oh, that's exciting. Tuesday. It says, but on Tuesday. <laughs> Are we <laughs> from Kentucky? It's from Tuesday. Uh, she has been very busy, and she's been very busy developing an amazing gin cocktail. So I'm going to step off to the side and drink a little and just let her show you. And then I'll tell you. Stuff. And then you'll join me, right? I'll be back Because it's well, nighttime well actually so that actually so i will go ahead and i will you know what i will pull myself out of this so you can introduce you know the ingredients and everything like that actually i have all my ingredients ready to go but i'll let you tell everyone else what we're making today right. and um what the ingredients i know some people may be making it along with us so uh, i'll let you take it away and i'll pop back in in just a second so okay <laughs> so this cocktail is a simple uh pre-prohibition -pro cocktail that i wanted to do that everyone could could do at home. <clears throat> it's the bee's knees. Um, I made mine a little bit fancy and pre-prepped mine. <laughs> a little bit of uh, brown sugar demerara with a uh, pinned rosemary on the corner because our bespoke gin has those notes of uh, herb rye tea and rosemary. <clears throat> So simple to start, build your cocktail with ice. The thing about this cocktail, it was uh, uh, in the early prohibition days, they added honey and 
tea and all these ingredients to your uh, batched gin because it tasted like something that you didn't want. So, <laughs> so they made this cocktail to make it like something that you wanted. But with our gin, it works best with these ingredients as well. Um, so we're gonna do two ounces of our bespoke. I'm back, just in time, right, to make it. <laughs> oh, were we not there? No, 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 you were there. I said, I'm back. Okay. Right. <laughs> I, had to, I had to go grab my, um, I had my shaker and my ingredients off to the side. So I had to go grab okay. them, but I got them now. And then the honey um, is just a one to two. Very simple. Just like you would do a Demerara or um, a simple syrup. For my Demerara, I like to do a one to two, but simple one to one. Um, and then a fourth of our honey syrup. How much of the honey syrup? I do uh, one ounce. Okay. I actually just made this. I actually have never made honey syrup before. I've made like demerara, of course, sugar, yeah. but it's the first time I made honey syrup. Yeah. But it, it turned out really good. Oh, it looks beautiful. <laughs> Rich in color. I like it. <laughs> and then we're going to do a fourth of our lemon. And... <laughs> That fresh squeezed. Yep, I fresh squeezed mine right before this. So, <laughs> did you cheat? No, well, no, I actually, we, I had to go buy lemons. I'm not gonna lie, literally 30 minutes before the stream, I came on, I bought some lemons. <laughs> <laughs> I see you, <laughs> and then we shake, man. I'm gonna mute myself because I'm a lot closer to the microphone. Gone and come a long way from here <laughs> to hide the flavor no one ever wanted from this beautiful creature that we have here. And we're just gonna get our sifter here, put it into the baby bow. And like I said before, I got really bougie because I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot my garnish. Oh, well, you know what? It, it just makes it pretty. It doesn't. <laughs> <You> forget. <laughs> and I don't have a fancy glass either, but I, I do have a martini glass. So you're, definitely get get you a, is it a coupe glass that you guys? Yeah. yeah. It, it looks so much better in that. You guys got to make it like that. <laughs> well, I did it in, uh, this way because on the lip, you're getting the brown sugars. And then on the nose, you're getting the rosemary from the bespoke. And and did you did you say what what you called this? It's a, it's the original bee's knees. I'm bees not. Knees, okay. gonna, uh, yeah, I'm not taking that. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, man. I love. Uh, cheers. Oh man, man, that honey syrup. I'm loving that honey syrup. I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna go through this whole bottle in like a week. <laughs> Wow. It's, you will, the, the reason why Adam said like reverse, because you could do a gold rush with the rot. Gotcha. I see. I was like, yeah, I was, I, I, I was curious about that. But, so I may change the title of this video, but either way, <laughs> man, yeah. that's delicious. I think we're playing with it because you can do it with both. And I think even though the, the honey is my favorite part about this, I think the gin shows shines through those similar, again, the, the, um, the bergamot notes, the eucalyptus, or what was the men? Elderflower. That's the one I was looking for. Yeah. And I feel like, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. this is, man, this is, tastes you know, way fancier. What I love doing most um, importantly on our menu is using both of the rye and the bespoke oh. in one cocktail. Wow. That's yeah. interesting. So a similar cocktail, but but do like half and half of the rye and the, the gin? Mm -hmm. Man, that sounds that sounds delicious. First of all, I want to give, acknowledge. Sorry, Stephen, I missed this. I was getting my ingredients. He says, "Loving the stream, Clifton. Let's make some cocktails." Well, Stephen, I hope you made some along with us. That's that's awesome. Well, so you guys said you just opened the distillery tours this week. Is yeah. the bar open that you guys are at right now? Well, so, obviously not right now because it's, it's like, Tuesday. Please, yeah. uh, we just opened on Tuesday. <laughs> all are welcome. Um, <laughs> we're. Uh, trying not to crawl uh, we're trying to crawl and not run right right now you know what i mean as far as the bar goes but um 
we're doing six tours a day with about 12 people in each tour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see Adam's just like drinking. He's going to drink the whole thing before you finish talking. <laughs> 12 people in each tour and we're ready for you. Just uh, everyone be, <laughs> be kind to be ready and so are we. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, if anyone in the chat has any questions in general, whether about this cocktail or cocktails in general, I, I think it's, she's your girl. So please ask away if you guys have questions. I mean, what, so you said you guys do a variation on that at the, at the bar. You guys do half gin and half of the rye. Are there any other specialty cocktails that you guys do um, that you guys serve there? Yeah, there's a, one that I do half and half that I um, use with um, a liqueur called Italicus, which is like a bergamotto. Um, I call it the Velveteen. It tastes like a garden garnish uh, with a rosemary tincture. It's delish. <laughs> I can't wait for you all to come. It's really good. It's awesome. Man, that's awesome. Well, Adam, what did you think of the cocktail? Menu. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Adam, what did you think of the cocktail? That is amazing. You know, I. Uh, I tell Ashley this all the time. I, I kind of have a trash cocktail palette because I just drink neat whiskey. I just drink neat spirits more than anything. There's nothing wrong with that. Though. I, I know. And, and she's always so kind when I say that. <laughs> I like she's both. I, 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 I go both, both ways. <laughs> but I just, you know, she has really taught me so much over this past year because, you know, Ashley joined our team. <laughs> right before we closed, closed. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> right before we closed. Yeah. Oh. And so, you know, we have kind of been messing around. She's been teaching me how to make these, these cocktails. And I'm one of those people. It's, you know, if you've ever heard like bakers and some people, they just can't bake because they have like hot hands and they, like, <laughs> melt all the butter or whatever. Right. I'm not with cocktails. You've never heard that. Yeah. They no. have like hot hands. They, they can't bake. And I would do the exact same thing right next to Ashley. And hers is just like this nectar of the gods. And mine is just like the the Arby's of cocktails. Like it's okay, <laughs> it's all right, but I don't, there's nothing wrong with Arby's. But but this like, is such, a, this is such an easy one. I think like people- all, Like all of us together, like it's, it's chef's hands, you know? It doesn't have to be like a certain ingredient. It's just by taste. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you especially know, when you're making drinks at home. The maker is. Yeah, sometimes at home I maybe go a little heavy-handed on the pores of the the liquor that's in there, but you know what? That's the advantage that of drinking it at home. <laughs> I will say I've I've done that in the past. So my wife is really not much of a drinker. Like she drinks sweet wine, you know. Like she's always that's just what she's always drank. It's like Moscato, right? Yeah, chilled sweet wine. It's all, all she all she drank. But she really does love this bespoke gin, mm -hmm. and so um, she kind of made this drink with it last year, and it was club soda and an orange slice with the gin. And so a couple years ago I had back surgery and she mowed the lawn all summer while I you know, was on the couch recovering oh. from surgery. And my job was to make the drinks. So she <laughs> come in and I would like make this drink and she'd drink some of it and she'd go back out, come back in, I'd remake it. And, it, and I noticed like halfway through, she's out there like stumbling and like the lines <laughs> are very wonky because I was making but it like awesome. I'm trying to make I was gonna say it, it, that makes mowing the lawn a lot more yeah, that that makes mowing the lawn, lawn a lot more enjoyable. <laughs> yes. I can't relate. I'm in an apartment in LA, so I, I <laughs> what is a lawn? Just kidding. You don't have one in LA. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So you can sit there and make them as heavy as you want, not to worry about messing with heavy machinery. So <laughs> our friend Todd Koopa says he loves a coop glass. Ha how appropriate, Todd. I just not, I noticed he said that earlier, but I missed the joke there. I got it now. <laughs> Yeah, Shout out to our friend at Matt at ADHD Whiskey, um, another great YouTube channel here. You yeah. guys can check him out. He's live tomorrow night um, doing Matt Madness, which I sadly lost in, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Matt um, is a good guy. He, uh, he has a really great channel. Really, really great channel. So oh, yeah, the one thing awesome. before I exit is like at home, if you all purchase both, they are so good together in, in one cocktail. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm going to have to try that. I mean, I you know, this is going to be crazy, but you know what? We, we have less than 15 minutes left. I'm going to mix the rye with the gin and just see what happens. You know what? I'm all about experimenting here. So, <laughs> well, Ashley, Ashley, if you're heading out, see you. Thank you so much. That was so much fun. I'm going to be making, like I said, I, the, the syrup is going to be like a staple in my. <laughs> I'm glad that she left the cocktail. Oh, of course. Yeah, you know what? She, she, if she were smart, she would have taken it with her. Yeah, you know what? She can make, she can make all the cocktails. The ghost here comes oh, out. There she goes. There she goes. 
Ah, <laughs> oh, well, that's awesome. Oh, that well, well, I'll let this blend like mingle here. Well, let's let's talk about what you guys have going on. You guys have, like I said, you got the single barrel release that just happened. Um, anything else like to talk more about that, or anything else coming next? Yeah, so you know we've got more of those founders collections coming out. So I was talking about those earlier. That I think Sway had said something about the the Boxer Grill founders. You know, we've got uh, one that just released last month, and it was uh, a 15 year old bourbon that's finished mm -hmm. in uh, um, uh, Mizanara, Japanese oak casks. And so obviously it's 15 years old, it's not radical to still it. You know, we've only been distilling since uh, 2014. Right. So Kabe, that actually came from Kabe's personal stocks. Um, you know, I, I'm a type of guy that collects bottles. Kabe's the type of guy that collects barrels, know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. had collected these barrels. He, he sort of bought these barrels from different distilleries in Kentucky and then just had the wild idea to take a few of them that were around 15 years old and finish them for a year in Japanese Mizanara oat casks. Um, but he's using some more of those Mizanara casks. So he took high gold distillate, mm -hmm. and put it right into those Mizanara casks. So it was unaged high gold distillate. And uh, he says he wants to let it sit there for like 10 to 15 years. We'll see what happens. I, I don't, that's a really long time. He's the genius, he's the mad scientist. I'll take his word on it. I really, I will see those things leak like crazy. So maybe. Well, I was going to say, so it's not a, I imagine that's not a type of oak, correct? I, it's, it's, I'm it not, is, I'm, it is. Oh, oak. is it? Oh, okay. I was saying, I'm not a wood expert. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. A lot of people don't know about Mizanara. So Mizanara is very old. Those trees are, you know, anywhere between 250 to 500 years old. Um, there's only 50 people in Japan that are actually certified to create Mizanara Japanese oak casks. Um, and so I think, let me think if I remember the name of the, the Coopers that we got them from, um, Ar Ariaki Sangio, I believe was their name. And they, uh, they employ something like 20 of those people that are actually certified to make those casks. Um, so the oak trees are very gnarly, obviously being so old. It's very mm. porous oak, so they're hard to maintain. Um, and they give really interesting flavors. They give really interesting flavors to to whiskey. Um, they'll give like sandalwood is a really big one. So that Mizanara Japanese, um, oh wow, fifteen year old. It kind of gives a sandalwood sort of finish to it. Um, so it's been really interesting, and we're going to see what you know what happens in the future with them. We've got different barrels kind of floating around this distillery, all sorts of different finishes. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna I'm gonna drop a, a little bomb, a okay, little bomb on the channel. Clifton, I hope you don't mind. Do it. Let's do it. Um, um, we have our next Founders Collection coming out, and we have not actively promoted it yet because it's still very early on. You know, we I think we literally just dumped the barrels like yesterday. Okay, it's exclusive info here, you guys. The exclusive, <laughs> it's Urban Bites exclusive. Um, it is a five grain, and it is a double chocolate malt bourbon. So it's majority corn, of course, but it has two types of rye. So it has unmalted rye and malted rye. It has chocolate malted wheat and chocolate malted barley in it. And I will tell you, I don't say this lightly, I think it's the greatest thing that we've produced so far. It's absolutely phenomenal. And we are going to release that in September. It's called Race King. And uh, it's kind of like after Thoroughbred, right? Gotcha. We're in the also Thoroughbred Racing. Um, it is phenomenal. It looks, when we are fermenting it, it looks like Cocoa Puffs. Like it's so dark, it wow. smells like espresso. Like when we dumped the barrels, the whole place, the whole distillery smelled like coffee this past week because we've been dumping them here and there. Um, so we're looking to release that in September. I think it'll be just as as limited as it is the other um, previous ones were, which are around you know thirteen hundred, fourteen hundred bottles, something like that. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward. Oh to Oh man, that that sounds great. I see everyone in the chat's like they're everyone lit up. Like they've been they've been pretty quiet tonight, but now everyone's like Steve's like that sounds that sounds fun. Lil yeah. says, "Ooh, that sounds interesting." Fred, "Ooh, wait, ooh, chocolate malt equals yum." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that sounds super exciting. Now that's usually like you said, very limited. Does it really typically make it outside of Kentucky? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it does. Okay. It does. Um, honestly, the Mizanara finished one. We really only had, I think Kentucky got like 30 bottles or something like that. We really tried to push that outside of Kentucky for that second release because mm -hmm. we felt like people needed it. People wanted that. You know, Boxer Grail, the first one, 
made it a little bit outside of Kentucky, but it was majority Kentucky. The mm-hmm. second one, we wanted to flip that script a little bit. We wanted to make sure that people outside the state were able to get it. With Race King, it's still too early to say. I mean, we don't even have a bottle count yet. We don't even really know what our pricing is going to be on it. We don't even really – in fact, I don't even think they have the final proof yet. I mean, they literally just got finished dumping it yesterday or today. So they haven't even mingled everything to see what the final proof is. Wow. see what the bottles are gonna we know what the bottles are gonna look like we just have no idea where they're gonna go yet um mm-hmm. fortunately that's not up to the distillery because of that wonderful three-tier system we can let our contributors worry about that so you know email them don't don't ask me <laughs> <laughs> gotcha that's exciting well you guys stay tuned i know that they are rabbit hole is awesome about all their social channels which i credit this guy to i don't know how much of he does it himself but you know what i always like to credit you for it because um, you are their digital brand ambassador, so guys, stay tuned. I know. Well, I mean, the 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 Mizanara oh, or the Mizanara one. Um, I think I heard about that from Twitter. You guys tweeted about. It. I was like, why is no one talking about this? This is so interesting. What you guys are doing with it? That's- yeah, it's, it's something. You know, I mean, we're still. You can still kind of look at us. I mean, I, I feel like it every day is is as many amazing things that we do and as successful as successful as we've been and and our flavor profiles and our distribution and you know our, our marketing and all that we're still kind of a startup, you know? I mean, we still operate like a family. Um, You know, I I feel so close to everybody from, from Cave to Ashley to, to, you know, other people in marketing to distillers to, we're we're just all so close. And I think it's, it's still that thing where we're just waiting for that moment when we really catch on fire, when we really catch on fire. And I think it's going to happen. You know, we got a little taste of it last year, the, the sherry finished derringer that one just out of mm-hmm. nowhere just blew up and it was mm-hmm. an allocation across the country you know some retailers couldn't even get it in we couldn't make it fast enough and so i'm starting to see that happen with rabbit hole and so yeah i mean the mizanara i thought that it got a great reception um it was a very high priced item i mean that was i think the 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 srp on it was like 1500 like 1495 so it was a very very expensive bottle and i think we were nervous about releasing that because we didn't know what that reception would be like. Right. It was incredibly well received. I mean, it's sold out pretty much everywhere. So I, I really like to see that people have that faith in us. I really, I really just, I'm very appreciative of that. That's awesome. Well, you have, I know Lil has been here the, pretty much the whole time. She's in Australia and she's a rabbit hole fan. So you guys have worldwide reach right there. <laughs> Um, a couple of channels that have, I just want to give a couple of shout outs to people that have popped in. This is my bourbon podcast. Perry, thank you for stopping in. I know it's late for you. He, he's been streaming. He's been recording a podcast after this. So, And then, of course, Prescription Bourbon, another awesome channel here on YouTube. Thank you guys for stopping in. Well, do you guys have any last minute questions for Adam before we wrap up here? I know I see Tony Tuto said, still looking for the Mizanara Oak finished rabbit hole here in New York, but we'll pick it up. Loving my Derringer. Yeah, yeah Derringer's awesome. Yeah, keep an eye out. I mean, Honestly, I think at this point, pretty much every account has sold through their allotment. Um, you know, I saw one. I, I mean, I'll be completely honest. I saw one at a liquor store here in Louisville. Um, it's been sitting on the shelf ever since they got it in because they marked it up about mm-hmm. four times what SRP was <laughs> on it. So I think they're just they're just holding on to it as a museum piece. It's a museum, yeah, not a store. Basically. Yeah, you know. So, so I think that would be if you're really desperate, you go for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're really excited. Oh, the Alice in Wonderland bottle. Oh man, see, everyone's so excited. They're they're just beautiful. I love them. Um, our yeah, friend Swan, he, he works at a um, big box liquor store, and he says confer- can confirm the PX Sherry has been flying off the couch. The, the couch. Why don't I say the couch? The shelves. <laughs> hey, we're we're working really hard to keep uh, keep producing that. I mean, you know, our 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 sort of challenge with that is it is the secondary finish. You know, that secondary uh, Sherry cast comes from Spain. Um, you know, COVID was not very kind on supply chains, obviously. So I right. think it played into it as well. Um, but you know, it's, it's just one of those things. You just can't rush it. You know, if we rush it, we're going to give you a subpar product. So just keep letting your customers know it's on its way. It's on its way. Now you guys, I noticed on your website, people can actually purchase some of your whiskeys and ship to their, their houses, depending on location. Yeah. Um, I saw both of these, both the gin and the rye are up there. They're $50. Um, if anyone's curious. Uh, if, you're, if you can't find it in your area, of course, um, fortunately, they're both readily available. Um, at least, I don't actually, I don't know about the gin. I don't know if it's in here in Southern California. Um, I see the rest of the products. I see the bourbons and the rice on the shelves all the time. Yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, uh, they passed that law in Kentucky 
earlier this year, late last year, something like that, earlier this year, it's called the DTC law that's uh, finally allowing, you know, distilleries to kind of ship directly to con uh, consumers. Mm -hmm. I don't ever expect that to be the, the way that people get their products. You know, I think mm -hmm. liquor stores and bars, you know, on-premise and off-premise are always going to be people's go-to, especially for trying things out for on-premise and then going to retail stores to buy them the bulk. But I think sometimes, you know, they just get that itch for something very specific. And if they can get it from the distillery and have it shipped to them, that's an easy way to do it. Um, right. Only, I think it's only like six states, something like that, maybe, maybe 13, something like that. Um, very, very small percentage of, of the country that's actually allowed to receive uh, products directly from distilleries. Uh, but I expect that to grow over the next decade. I really do. I would hope so. I mean, especially with it, I think it makes it a lot, especially if something like COVID, I'm not even going to say that. I don't want to, I need to knock on all the way. I'll say if something like this happens again, yeah. having that system in place would be very beneficial to actually keep, you know, companies alive, keep small businesses alive. If we have this already set up in place, I think that's really important. I'm um, really to see how many uh, bakeries are going to open this next year with all the sourdough that people started making <laughs> during COVID. <laughs> 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 that's that's a good point. Business ideas. I wonder how many people are starting a business up. They're just waiting right. for the right moment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it was a terrible time, but I think that people, you know, humans are an amazing animal. I mean, I think that we take challenge and we try and make opportunities out of it every 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 aspect of our lives. And so, I just saw so many people, myself included, um, Ashley included, that really tried to do things during you know the pandemic to kind of make ourselves better people. And if that's making sourdough, if that's learning karate, <laughs> if that's learning how to drink bourbon, uh, make cocktails, people, but, you know, right. I mean, it's, it's amazing. The, the skills that people learn through this and coming out the other side, I think we're going to be even stronger than we were before. Absolutely. I just tried my blend of the, the rye and the gin. I actually, actually, you did the blend just now. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, actually the rye, it? honestly, it? it still tastes like the rye. Actually oh, the gin oh. didn't detract at all. It's just more barrel. One now. barrel. One barrel, mm -hmm. two distinct spirits, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for coming on. Um, where can people find you on the web? You guys have you know your own Instagram account you want to promote and also Rabbit Hole, of course. Absolutely. So Rabbit Hole is super easy. It's just at Rabbit Hole um, on Instagram and at Rabbit Hole Distillery on Facebook. Um, you know, we've got Smashly Angel, which I love. <laughs> oh, my God. That's the best name ever. Smashly Angel. It is I the love best it. Um, and of course, I'm at Bourbon Tuba because I love bourbon and I play the tuba, so that was easy. Um, but you know, you can always you can always find us all over Rabbit Hole's handles. They love taking pictures of us because we're just so adorable. Mm. So come check us out there. The next time you all are in Louisville, please come visit. You know, Swan Perry. I know you're close in Lexington, so come up here and, and come see me. But uh, you know, Clifton, I always say this. You've got the open invitation, my friends. You've got <laughs> oh, the open I hope to make it out there. Maybe not this you know, year, but next. Thanks for having us. Like, this was awesome. <laughs> this was great. Yeah. Hopefully next year I can make it out there in person. And if so, we'll def absolutely yeah. do another stream live from Rabbit Hole. That'd be so much fun. Um, well, thank maybe you guys so much. Yeah, maybe in the daytime. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I know it's late. I, you guys got to get home. But um, thank you all so much. Again, this was so much fun. Cheers. I'll see you guys on Saturday. I'm going to do another gaming stream. I don't know exactly what I'm going to play, but I'm going to play something fun. Um, so, yeah. Cheers, guys. Have a wonderful rest of your week. And thank you so much again, Adam and Ashley. Y'all are awesome. Cheers, cheers. everyone.